doctor and healthcare is a calling, not a job. Dude, at the end of the day, Dr. Jude, the truth about why doctors and nurses are leaving. Where are all the doctors and nurses going? My name is Dr. Jude. This video is basically based on my opinion. Also, it's based on some reading from online forums to articles from the BMA, the GMC, recent statistics which have been released, a lot of accounts. I have watched a lot of videos from doctors and nurses who have recently left and tried to make notes on their reasoning. There are problems and hopefully maybe even the Department of Health or the government will actually listen to what is being said in this video and thousands more like it and hopefully make those changes. I hope so, man. But maybe we're just doing some wishful thinking. In 2021, 33,000 nurses quit their job. From the NHS. Wow. Was the, the exodus of doctors from the NHS was the highest it has ever been. And I don't think we can talk about this without addressing the elephant in the room. And that, of course, is COVID. It was like a huge reset. It forced us to reflect on our lives and reassess what is important to us. And, and not just reflecting on our own lives, but working conditions for doctors and nurses, at least in the US, got significantly worse. And you have um, various surveys and reporting over the last few years that actually track this trend. Issues with burnout, issues with mental health, happiness, etc. People want meaningful and enjoyable work. Our resilience is at an all time low and actually there is the great resignation which transcends just healthcare. Young people all over the world are readjusting what they do for a living. Doctors want flexibility and that is something that you don't really get in a career in healthcare. I remember spending years as a junior doctor and having to work grueling rotors, not really wanting to be in hospital on night shifts, Christmases, birthdays, parents' birthdays and having to miss several family functions because of my rotor. And I just think that now there is much less tolerance to that amount of impact on one's life. And the reason why I think is because of the increased visibility of other options. So let me explain. When I was in college and in med school, singular focus, I did not, like sure, I had friends who were not in medicine that had different, easier lives, whatever, not as much sacrifice in various ways. But it was like, yeah, but they're doing their own thing. Nowadays, especially with social media, with a lot of these doctors now having side hustles and leaving entirely, I mean, I know I love too, right? It's much more apparent that there are other options out there. And now it's not just a matter of, okay, I'm gonna grind hard and I got my blinders on and I'm focusing on this. Now it's, you're constantly being reminded that there are these other options, that you don't have to work this hard, you don't have to sacrifice your birthdays and your Christmas and Thanksgiving and work 80, 90, 100 hours per week. I remember being stuck inside in my 30s studying for exams all weekend with very little money whilst my friends from university were working in banking and enjoying big bonuses, holidays for their family, nice new homes and you couldn't help but feel that like you were several steps behind. Yeah, the two things there, one is like the age. So I think a lot of young doctors start feeling that when they are late 20s, early 30s, because a lot of people that didn't go into medicine are now having those big landmark moments like their family, housing, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's a lot of changes, whereas you were more similar in your you know, late teens to early to mid 20s. But the reason why that might be more tolerable is that when you're in your late 20s to early 30s, for the more traditional path, if you go straight through from college to med school, you're very close to having that attending salary and being able to shift your lifestyle. So I think a lot of it going back is this increased focus on the alternatives and that pressure that you feel that you're falling behind is much greater now than ever, not just because of your friends. Again, because you know you would notice that pre-social media in your late 20s to early 30s, but now it's happening at all stages and at a much higher magnitude. Working as a doctor means many early starts, late nights, lots of exams, high pressured work, high stakes and many doctors are human many of them not all but many should be rewarding but it often isn't because of this heightened level of anxiety and stress and i can tell you hands down doctors are worried about making mistakes worried about what that might mean for their career what that might mean for the patient and ultimately doctors are human, so they can and will make mistakes at some point in their career. Lots of doctors and nurses are complaining that they feel exposed. They feel that they're more likely to make a mistake. And when you combine this 
with the litigious nature of healthcare, it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle because they feel exposed because of low staff numbers and they are then choosing to go and do less pressured work in other industries, which actually then makes the staffing crisis worse. Yeah, my girlfriend is actually in the situation right now where she has felt very uncomfortable in her current place of employment. Today's actually her last day. And she's in the ED and multiple times in the last month has taken care of 12 patients, 12 patients assigned to her, which is not, that should never be the case. And she's stressed because she's like, hey, if I make a mistake, there are a lot of downsides here and I'm at risk in certain ways. My patients are at risk in a lot of ways. And yeah, I'm actually urging her. I'm like, choose, first of all, a different institution that's not gonna put you in those situations and maybe even a different field within nursing that's not gonna be as high stress, right? Mental, physical, emotional burnout is very real in hospital and I honestly don't think I know a single doctor who would claim not to have experienced this to some degree over the last few years. COVID completely exhausted healthcare workers, emotional and physical reserves. And since then there has really been no opportunity to recover. Other sectors had the opportunity to work from home or adjust their working arrangements. Whilst the world stayed home, we went to work. And if you cast your mind back to the level of stress and anxiety at this new novel virus that was killing people, it was it was worrying. Especially during a time where not only were we seeing the British public suffer, but we were seeing our own colleagues suffer. So I think the fact that if the politicians don't listen to us at such an acute time, when we're in such high levels of distress, I really think it's a shame on British politics. And whilst they applauded in the streets and people came into their balconies and at their front doors and clapped healthcare workers and created this ethos of the heroic healthcare worker, we certainly didn't feel like that. And there was a complete disconnect from reality. Yeah, because, you know, showing appreciation and, and, and applauding and such is one thing. Driving meaningful change for working conditions is a completely different thing. And the issues that are happening here in the UK, very similar to the issues that happen in the US, it's sad. We feel as though the government have just not really backed up that good nature and that appreciation with action. Really Same in the US. After another. But I definitely feel as though there has been a change in hospital culture. And this is reflected in the junior doctor training surveys and the NHS staff survey. Junior doctors feel far disconnected from senior doctors. Frontline clinical staff feel that policymakers and management have no idea what it's like. And because of the structure of shift work, it's much more difficult to build that bond as a team. If you look at the rates of harassment, bullying, racism, claims of block to career progression based on prejudice, it is not getting any lower and there isn't a trust in the entire country that doesn't have its own fair share of issues. Lots of hospitals have created anti-bullying campaigns. There have been lots of stamp out racism projects but the results are still pretty poor we need to do something about that dude race in medicine is such a tricky thing to even approach i'm a minority i've been subject to discrimination in my life other people have been subject to discrimination in their lives and it's so hard to toe that line to have these real discussions. Like, I don't even feel comfortable diving too deep in this video because I, I think that's a topic that I need a full video to just discuss. Because on one hand, you want to, like, you need to find the balance point. And on one hand, you want to discourage any kind of racial discrimination. But on the other hand, you don't want to have false positives. You see what I'm saying? So it's a really tricky thing. It's a thing that I'll approach in some detail in a future video, so subscribe because I think it is really important and uh, it requires its own video. Anyways, I remember being an FY1 doctor and that meant lots of late nights, which wasn't paid for. It meant coming in early, it meant high pressure work, but I remember in general, I did enjoy it because I knew that I wanted to be a surgeon and actually some of my fondest memories were like Christmas parties or Friday night beers with my team. It was an opportunity to connect with senior doctors and consultants who I 
than necessarily no normal people and human, but you have a beer with these guys and they let their hair down and you realize, you know what, they're pretty cool. And actually one day I might be a surgeon. And now that I am the consultant, I think it's really important that we are seen to be human and we are able to talk to the juniors and they feel open to come and speak to us at any opportunity. And so that's how I do it. Training is long, it's expensive, it's difficult. And without connecting with and inspiring the next generation of doctor, they're going to keep dropping out. And many of them are realizing that actually there is no pot of gold at the end. There's just more work and more stress. Yeah, I do see this trend where, I said this before years ago too, but I think that medicine, healthcare, is a little bit overhyped. I think it's actually a great profession still, but I think it's overhyped. And with each passing year, the hype starts to match reality closer and closer and closer. And there's going to be a tipping point at some point in the future where conditions do actually need to change. If we want the best people taking care of us in the hospitals for us and our loved ones, the best quality, the best outcomes for our patients, right? In British history, being a doctor was noble work. In previous eras, we were defined by our profession and had intrinsic value linked to this. You know, one of those earlier photos is like how things used to be uh, 100 years ago. Read this book, I think it's called The Anatomy of Addiction. I think it's actually on the reading list on medschoolinsiders.com. Such a fascinating book about William Halstead and the origins of modern surgery. So, so cool, so cool. I really, I learned a lot about modern medicine, modern surgery, and a lot of the culture that is still ingrained to this day. Really fascinating, I highly recommend. Link below. Into a bank and said you were a surgeon, you'd be greeted with a hearty warm shake by the manager. Today, nobody cares. Times have changed. And so the other elephant in the room is pay. And it's no secret, it's poor. Doctors and nurses have been subjected to minuscule pay rises. The pay for doctors in the UK versus the US is massive once they're fully trained, right? So consultants, is essentially their equivalent of attending surgeons here in the US, and it's a huge discrepancy. When they're actually in training, my understanding is, well, I thought it was better for us here, but uh, another, IJ, Dr. A, was explaining in one of his videos that um, when you look at the per hour compensation, because they get paid per hour in the UK, they're not just salaried like us here in the, in the US, that they get paid better, but like, you know, training is just training. Most of your career is gonna be fully trained and there there's a huge discrepancy, even if in training, sure, they're making more per hour in the UK. And almost a decade of pay freezing, which the government called austerity. But whatever you want to call it, current pay does not reflect the level of training, the skill and expertise, the risks, and of course the impact that current healthcare professionals make every single day. Every totally single day. agree. And over this time. The British Medical Association and the Royal College of Nursing have estimated a pay cut of more than 30%. So it's not surprising that many doctors and nurses are leaving for higher paid work elsewhere. And the biggest lie that people are gonna tell you is, ah. If you care about money, you're going into it for the wrong reasons. Being a doctor in healthcare is a calling, not a job. Dude, at the end of the day, it's your time and effort, and yes, it is a job, it's a career. And money should not be your only reason for going into it, but you should at least be compensated fairly for the time, effort, energy, sacrifice, et cetera, that you're putting into it. If you do come across someone who's like, ah. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. I wouldn't care if I made $10,000 a year. It's like, okay, virtue signaling to the max right there. Nonsense. And over the last five years, I know doctors who have gone to the US, Canada, back to India, the Middle East, you name it, Doctors are migrating. There is definitely an exodus to greener pastures. And doctors and nurses are very bright, very intelligent people. And so unsurprisingly, they are going it alone, building businesses that are making them lots more money than they would have made as junior doctors. Or they're actually taking up work in med tech, in management consultancy, and almost overnight, doubling or tripling their salaries. You see that here in the US too. A very common thing, at least historically, was um, going into consulting, McKinsey, BCG, et cetera. And now in the last decade, or, or actually even more than a decade, you also see a lot of people going into med tech, medical devices and medical technology. And you know the startup culture in Silicon Valley is, is really exciting when it comes to medicine and health. But at least here in the US, the difference in pay from being an attending to going these other routes is not as much of a difference 
Um, and, and in fact, you may actually be making less on those other routes, although you'll have a better lifestyle. Whereas in the UK, it sounds like it's an attending versus these other routes, it's a huge step up. And um, that also is probably, I would guess, is probably driving a greater proportion of them to leave than what's happening in the US. I don't know the actual stats, it's just my guess. So unsurprisingly, the nurses have recently voted to strike and I'm pretty sure the junior doctors will be after that. And I would not be surprised if the consultants were after that, which would be unprecedented, not surprising, but very sad. One of the commonest themes that I'm seeing is that they did not feel supported or able to provide the level and quality of care that they had set out wanting to when they embarked on this career. And for that reason, they decided to leave. So if we do not address this quickly, healthcare in the UK is going to look very different over the next 10 years. And we all suffer because us and our loved ones are gonna be patients at some point, and we're the ones who will absolutely be paying the price in the future, even if right now you're just like, oh, you stop complaining, doctors. If you're the one who's saying that, think further ahead. Now is a good time to be a young surgeon because we have an opportunity to innovate. We have an opportunity to bring in chains, to introduce new ways of working to reshape our NHS for the future, to renegotiate pay structures, to create a system that works for people and is brought up to date to modern times. I think it's quite exciting to be starting out as a consultant and if you are a junior doctor coming through, personally, I think now is a time that we can actually leave a positive legacy on the NHS. Otherwise, I love that mindset, love it. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. So I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes, and that is, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. So be an optimist. Nice. Dr. Jude, great video, man. And to my viewers, what do you agree or disagree with? Let me know with a comment down below. Much love, see you in the next one.